Hey guys, welcome to My Sew Bliss. Today I'm super excited to bring you another sewing tutorial with Baby Lock sewing machines. I'm going to be using my Baby Lock Brilliant, which is this machine right here. This is such an amazing machine. I love it. I use it every day and for most of my sewing. This is what I am sewing on. Um, it has lots and lots of great features and comes with all the like basic feet that you would need and I just love it. It works so well. So if you're looking for a great machine, make sure to check this one out. I will leave links down below for it and I'll also leave a link down below for all the um, videos and tutorials that I have done with this machine. Today I'm going to show you how to make a dress. I'm going to be making this simplicity pattern. Show you right here and I'll put a picture right here of the one that I've already made. I made view C, which is this one right here, and I altered the neckline on it a little bit. I did another, a previous video on it, and I'll put a link down below for it, for altering the neckline. I'm not gonna show you in this video. You can go watch that other one to see how I altered the neckline. Um, so I'm gonna sew it a little differently than the pattern says because of the way I altered it. Um, so if you're not, altering your neckline, your steps, your first couple steps might be a little different. But other than that, I'm gonna be following how they do it for the most part. <laughs> I might put my own little twist on it. Um, and then I'm gonna be making view B this time, which for me, I'm just gathering less. It has like one less tier is the main difference. But I am still gonna be using um, the short sleeves. So the sleeves on view C, I'm gonna be doing those. I love them, they're so cute, and I just love how they turned out on the previous dress I made. So really, I just want a shorter version of this dress, and I think it'll be more flattering with view B, being short, that is, and then with the short sleeves, cute summer dress. So I'm excited to show you guys how to sew this and sew it with, with you. So let's get started. I have all my fabrics cut out, and then I actually, for this project, I surged all my edges because the fabric that I'm using, so I'm using this like, it's kind of a little canvasy, almost denim-y. And I don't think I took a picture of it, but I got it from Joann's. It's lightweight and it's still like flexible and pliable and whatever, but it's a little bit like heavier and it does fray gosh, like just surging it. I was like getting it everywhere, all over my pants and my outfit. I probably have stuff everywhere. So that's one thing I decided to do first was just surge every edge of all my pieces. And I think that's going to make this just a lot cleaner of a project. So that's something you can do beforehand. If you don't have a serger, you definitely don't have to do this. I just like that as a seam finish. Um, and then everything else I'm going to be doing on the Baby Lock Brilliant using a straight stitch the whole time. So that's something I did to prepare my fabrics. So now I'm ready to get started sewing my pieces together. To start, I'm gonna take my facing pieces, um, which like I said earlier, I altered mine a little bit. Um, I altered the neckline, which made it, means I altered the facing pieces as well. So this looks a little bit different than what you might have. Um, and I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna take, this is my front two facing pieces, and right here is gonna be a seam. So first I'm gonna sew that seam, and I'm just gonna stitch. I'm doing my regular 5 8 inch seam allowance and sewing those two pieces together because that's gonna be my V-neck right there. And then once that is sewn, so I'm gonna do this at the same time, so I might as well just show you guys right now. I'm gonna take, and I'm sewing my pieces right sides together. So this is my facing pieces right sides together. And then once that's sewn, I'll open it up and do the same. This is my back facing piece. And I'm gonna do matching up the short sides up here, matching them both up. There's even a notch right there. So you just match those and then sew right there as well. So I'm gonna create that whole facing piece into one giant piece. Okay, right, so I'm lining up this center seam this is going to be the center front seam right sides together and sewing at five eighths of an inch I'll just start right at that corner and sew up And 
And then I'm actually going to press that open real quick just because this fabric is going to press really nicely and I think it's really going to help me as I sew. So I'm going to press it and then come back over here to sew these ends. So now I have that facing piece ready to go. I'm actually just going to set it off to the side for a minute. These are my front pieces. You should have two of them that are mirror images of each other. Um, here you can see where I raised it for my neckline. So I'm going to have a center seam right here. So I'm going to take mine and put them right sides together and match up this raw edge right here. And I'm going to be stitching right here. Five eighths. Five eighths inch, inch seam allowance right along here. And I'm gonna go sew that and then we'll do our shoulder seams. I got that seam sewn and then I ironed it open. I just love with the um, surged edges. It just looks clean and really nice finish. And then especially once you iron it, it looks really nice. So I'm really happy with that so far. Um, once that's done, we're gonna take our back piece and lay the back and the front pieces right sides together. And we're gonna match up our shoulder seams right here. And that also has a notch right here and right here. So I'm gonna match up those notches. And if you want to, you can pin in place. My fabric's not very flimsy, so I'm, I feel pretty good about not pinning it. Um, so I'll probably just take it over. But I'm, yep, gonna take it over and just do my straight stitching. So once you have those shoulder seams sewn, now we're going to put our facing on to our front neckline. So it doesn't really lay flat. If you're looking at it like this, you can see like there's no real way to pull it, but that's okay because it's supposed to lay that way so that it lays nicely over your body because your body's not flat. <laughs> so we're going to take our facing piece and we're putting right sides together and i'm gonna make sure this v right here lines up really nicely with the v of the front so i'm actually going to pin that first and maybe make sure that one's laying a little flat so that i can get it accurately and this is a good point to pin a good amount <laughs> you definitely want to pin here So then I'm gonna match up my shoulder seams with the seam of the shoulder seam of the facing as well on both sides. And then everything else you kind of just ease it in. It should fit pretty well, but this way it's divided up equally. So if you want to, you can um, pin the rest of this. You don't have to, but maybe I'll put a couple pins in it just to make sure it gets spread nicely. And then once this is pinned, we can take it over to the sewing machine. And I like to start in the back. Um, doesn't really matter where, but I just prefer it that way. And then I'm doing 5 8 inch seam allowance again and stitching all the way around. With that sewn, I'm actually going to take my scissors and right at this point, so how I raise my neckline and like there's a seam right here. Um, I'm going to cut <clears throat> two, I'm just cutting through the fabric to my stitching. I'm not cutting through my stitching, but just to that stitching. These might not be sharp enough. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm going to cut through, well, I'm cutting through the fabric to the stitching. And this way it'll fold um, in nicely, the facing well, and it'll lay nicer. And then I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to iron my facing and my seam allowance. So see how this seam allowance right here, I'm going to iron it out. So, so it's right sides out like this. 
and it's kind of going to look funny and bulky. So ironing that is getting us ready to do our under stitching, which is going to help hold um, that facing to the inside, kind of keep it there and holding the seam allowance to it. So I'm just going to iron it real quick and then we'll actually just come back to the sewing machine. So with that ironed, it's just laying a lot nicer for me. My seam is pushed towards the facing. So now I'm going to stitch that together. So it's just going to be the facing and the seam that we're stitching together. And this stitching will, won't be seen at all. I'm just going to lay it in my machine. So this is like the inside of my neckline right now. Going, I'm starting in the back again, and I'm just stitching right along this edge. You can kind of see it. So right where this seam is, um, is where I'm going to be stitching. And we'll just follow that along. And then I'll show you once we get to the point of it too. Okay, so once I get down to this point, there's a lot of fabric going on right here. But I just want to pull that facing tight and make sure I'm just getting the facing and the seam allowance or the seam underneath. Um, and because I cut to that point, um, I'm able to kind of straighten it out a little bit. And the fabric will lay straight instead of being curved. It's hard to tell right here, but if you're looking at your own fabric, it's a lot easier to see how it's going to do it easier. And there might be a little pucker on that um, facing piece, but you should be able, if you clipped it right to that stitching, it should, should lay nicely. So then I'll just keep going around, make sure you're not catching any other fabric underneath. With that under stitching done, now I'm going to take it over to my ironing board again, and I'm going to flip my facing to the inside and kind of roll it so that the facing stays on the inside. And I just have this beautiful edge finished. So I'm going to iron that really nice. So that's my under stitching that I just did. And then this will be the front. So you won't even see any stitching. And one thing I like to do to keep this in place is then just take a needle and thread and do it by hand, but stitch um, the shoulder seams. I like to just stitch that shoulder seam to the shoulder seam, the facing of the shoulder seam to the shoulder seam of the shirt, if that makes sense. So I do that on both sides. And then I even did the V-neck on the inside, the facing right here. I stitched that with a needle and thread, I stitched that to this so that you wouldn't even see it on the right side. On the outside, you would never see it because it would just lay flat and be attached to this. And that really helps it so it doesn't um, pull out or come out when you're wearing the dress. And that really helps with facings. But also giving it a nice press helps a ton too. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Now our necklines are finished and we're gonna set that off to the side. And now we're gonna get our sleeve pieces. You should have two pieces, mirror images. And we're going to gather this top part right here. So you should have marked where the little dots are. You're gonna find the two widest dots and we're gonna do a gathering stitch, which is just like a longer stitch. We're gonna do two rows of gathering from each dot. So I'll take you over to the sewing machine and we'll stitch that on. On the baby lock brilliant you're going to come over here and right here it says 2.5 and that's going to be my stitch length it kind of shows you what that little dash is and then over here is the width you can see by the zigzag how wide it's going to be um but we just want to do with the deal with the length right now so i'm going to take that up i like to do a 4.5 not a full five i mean that's a five is the highest it will go but a 4.5 just because I hate it when I stitch my gathering stitches and it becomes, and then it comes unraveled. So just to be safe, I can like to do 4.5 because then I can still gather it. And I do two rows of stitching. I do one at about a quarter of an inch and then just inside five eighths of an inch, I do my second row. And you wanna make sure your tails are long so that you can pull on them later when we gather.
And then while I'm over here at the sewing machine, once those gathering stitches are done, I'm gonna take each sleeve piece and fold it in half. So the right sides are together and I'm matching up this side seam. This is gonna be like the under seam of the sleeve. And there's a notch right there, you can match that up. And we're gonna stitch that together. And don't forget to change your stitch length back to normal. So I just leave mine at 2.5 and I find that good enough. And we're gonna stitch at 5 eighths of an inch and back stitch at the beginning and the end. With our sleeves already on our sides and the gathering stitches done, we're then gonna finish off the bottom of our sleeve. So we're gonna finish the hem. And I do have this stitching, but I actually, I think I'm still gonna do a narrow rolled hem, which is what um, it calls for. So I didn't need to do that stitching, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take it over to my ironing board. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a very small fold of my hem and I'm going to fold it once like this and then I'm going to roll it and do it one more time and I'm just going to make it really thin and actually this like surging it might have helped because then it kind of gives me a guide on where and how much to fold it um, it gives me a good idea because we just want to make it like a small little baby hem <laughs> um, so that we can like do our little ruffle detail in a second so this, yeah, just needs to be ironed really well so that we can then go and stitch it down. So I'm gonna iron it and pin it so that I'll be ready to stitch it down. Once you have that narrow hem done, your sleeves should look like this. You should have two of them. And now we're gonna do the casing um, for the elastic to go in. And you're going to need some single fold bias tape or you can make your own. I am being lazy and just using what I have, which is this bright yellow. <laughs> like it's kind of fun on the blue dress that I made. Um, I use like a teal so it doesn't match it at all. But it's kind of like a fun little surprise when you put the dress on. Um, but no one's going to see it. So it doesn't matter. But you could make your own um, bias tape, a single fold. I haven't done a tutorial on this one. Maybe I should on how to make your own single fold bias tape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pin this in place and there is a marking on your pattern. It's about two inches up. So I'm just gonna take um, my seam gauge, whatever this thing is called, my seam gauge, and measure about two inches up. And I'm folding the raw edge of that in so that there's no raw edge. And I'm just gonna line it up now that I moved it. I'm gonna line it a little bit higher and pin that in place. And I'm just gonna go around the whole band of the arm until we come back to the other side so we can match those up. And as you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you are keeping it about the same distance away from the edge. So you don't have to measure every time. Let's do it this way. But I would measure every few inches or so. Make sure you're just pinning through that one layer of the sleeve and not through the whole sleeve. <laughs> and then once you get back to the other side, um, I'm gonna trim it. I'm gonna go a little bit longer than what we need. So that way I can fold it under just like I did on the other side so that we don't have any raw edges sticking out. And I'm just gonna kind of butt it up next to this other one and pin that in place. Now I can take it over to the sewing machine. So now we just wanna sew this casing on and I'm just gonna go along and sew the edge 
I'm going to sew the edge right along here and then I'll sew along the other edge. So it's pretty simple. Just make sure you have thread that's going to match or look good with your fabric. And just start at one end and work my way around. I have one side sewn down and then I'm just going to go to the other side of my bias tape and sew that side down. Once I have that bias tape sewn down, I'm then going to take my elastic and just have this piece and I cut it um, using the guide that comes with the pattern. And then I'm just putting a safety clip, safety pin, what do you call these, <laughs> on the end and sliding it through one of the openings and going around the entire um, arm and make sure you don't pull the whole thing through. Make sure you hold one end. <laughs> Once I have my elastic through, I like to just take the ends of it and overlap them and do a little zigzag stitch. And then I'm going to put it in there and then with it in there, I just line it up with this opening, line it up with this opening right here. And I'm just going to do a little zigzag stitch over the top of it to kind of like seal it in there. One thing I didn't do before we sewed our sleeves was actually sew our side seams of our top. So I'm going to take it and put it right sides together, line up my side seams. Is there a notch? There is. There's a notch. So you can match those up, match up your raw edges, and we're going to sew those together at five eighths of an inch, both of our side seams. Now that we have our side seams done, we're ready to set in our sleeves. So you're going to look at your sleeves notches, and there should be one notch on one side and then a double notch. And then you're also going to look at the dots. And we had those dots for when we gathered, and then we have the center of the top right there. So we're going to be lining all of these things up so that it matches and is put in correctly. So we're going to be putting right sides together. So I have the top, I have the right sides facing in. So I have wrong sides out on the top and then sleeve. I'm just going to leave it as is, and we're going to tuck it inside of our shirt. So I'm lining it up right sides together and gathering <laughs> strings are really long. So ignore those for now. I'm going to line up this seam. So the side seam, I'm lining that up again, right sides together, pin that in place. And then I'm going to come over here and line up my not notches. And actually I'm on the wrong, wrong side. So that shows me like, look at my notches <laughs> and get everything lined up. Okay. Let's try that again. Putting it right sides together, inside, tuck it in there. There we go. Okay. So, first thing I'm lining up side seam, pin in place. And now we can go up, and I'm going towards the back for this. I'm lining up my double notch right here. So that's the backs of the sleeve, the back sleeve for the back of the arm. Single notch right here and that in place. And then we have our dots. Now I'm going to line those dots up. And as I do this, I'm lining up the raw edges as well. I'm just putting pins in these specific spots to begin with. So I have that and then the center dot get those strings out of the way. The center dot is going to match up with the shoulder seam. And we'll pin that in place and then go to the last dot on the side. Where's my dot? And is right there. Move my gathering threads out of the way. Okay, and then pin that in place. And then once I have all those pinned in place, 
I can gather the sleeve to fit. So see how all this access, excess, excess, oh my gosh, how do you say the word access? Excess thread or fabric is there. So I'll take my two, um, this would be my bobbin threads. If I sewed it this way, oh, no, these are my top threads. Half of the time I don't even notice a difference if it's the bobbin or the top. So, but I'm just going to gather that and try and equally divide it between the section that it's gonna be in. So we'll go right here. Okay. And just, yeah, gather it until it fits in that space and then kind of equally distribute those gathers and pin them in place a few times so that where they stay let's see this side's a little and it's nice because like that center dot we want it to stay there so like you just have to divide up these two sections and kind of make them look even and spread and a lot of times i like to just take a pin once my gathers are there and run that pin along those gathers and it kind of spreads them out nicely. I think I learned that in school or some, I don't know, someone taught me that and I don't know what it is or why, <laughs> but it does. It like really helps distribute um, the gathers and makes them look and lay really nice. So highly recommend trying to do that. Um, usually it's like a thicker pin of mine, but especially when we get to like the skirt part or if you're doing view C for this pattern, this is just so handy because there's a lot of gathers in the skirt part. Okay. So it's looking really good. I think, yeah, I'm going to place a few pins in it and take it over to the sewing machine. Over at my sewing machine, I'm just doing a regular stitch all the way around, and I just like to start near that um, side seam at the bottom, and then make sure things line up right. And I'm sewing like on the inside of everything, so this would be the sleeve that I'm sewing on top of, and then the outside piece is the actual shirt, if that makes sense. Um, and it just kind of makes it, so you're sewing in that round, makes it easier. With our sleeves put in, we're now going to set our top off to the side and work on the skirt part. So we're going to get our pocket pieces and our front skirt and our back skirt. And we're going to be taking the front and the back. So we're going to be doing this to both pieces. And we're going to be putting the pocket pieces on first. So we're going to be matching. I don't know if I even clipped. Oh, I did on some of them. <laughs> okay. So, some, okay, there we go. I couldn't find my notch for a second. So we're going to make that notch line up with our side notch. And also the dots are going to line up. So, but we are doing it right sides together. So I put my dots on the wrong side. But I'm just going to line it up just like this. And then take it over to my sewing machine. And I'll sew those together. But you want to sew at 3 eighths of an inch instead of 5 eighths of an inch for the pockets. So I'm going to sew all four pockets on. So there's obviously two in the front and then two on the back, matching up the notch and the dots as well. After I've sewn all four pocket pieces to the skirt front and the skirt back, I then pressed it open. So I sewed it this way and then pressed it all four of them out um, with the seam allowance out as well. And then I'm going to take both pieces. So I'm taking my front piece and laying it right sides together with my back piece and lining up the raw edges. So these are the side seams of the dress or skirt at this point and lining up the pocket, lining everything up because then we're going to sew these pieces together. So I'm going to pin both sides and then we'll take it over to the sewing machine. Now over at the sewing machine, I'm going to be sewing at five eighths of an inch 
and I'm just starting at the top and then I'm going to work my way down and then once I hit these points I'm going to go around the pocket. So I'll show you how I do that. And so right to that point and then I'm going to leave my needle down and pivot and then whoop, and then put my presser foot down again and sew around the pocket. And try and keep it at five eighths of an inch. A little bunch in there. There we go. Make sure it's laying flat. Pivot all the way around that pocket. And go back up. And work our way to the dot. And if you need to pick it up and pivot again to go over to the dot and then pivot to go down. The rest of the skirt. And then I'll do the other side. Once I have those side seams done, and while I'm over here at my sewing machine still, I'm going to um, lengthen my stitch to make my gathers on my skirt. So on the top of the skirt, I'm gonna go between each of my seams. So on the front piece, I'll do two um, lines of gathering stitches, just from one side seam to the other, and I'll do the same thing on the back. And like I said, I'm gonna do two rows for each, for the front and the back, so that we can gather the whole thing. Once we have our gathering stitches complete on the skirt, we're gonna set that off to the side, and then we're gonna take our three ruffle pieces. And these are gonna be nice and long pieces. They should have notches on the end. We're gonna take them and put them right sides together and sew them all together. So I'm just gonna match up these short ends right here. So I'd match those two up and then add my third one on the end, on either end of the next one. And yeah, just make this really long strip. And this is gonna, is what is going to be the bottom of the dress. So it's going to create this really fun ruffle. So I'm going to take these over and sew these three all together. We're then going to do our gathering stitches um, along the top edge of each section. So I'm just going to sew from like one seam to the next seam and then stop and then sew from one seam to the next seam. So that way we are just gathering each section. So it's going to be in thirds. And I'm going to do the two rows just like I did on the skirt and the sleeves. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. After I've done my gathering stitches along the top, so all the way around, I'm going to finish off the bottom edge, which is just going to be our narrow, narrow <laughs> rolled hem, um, just like we did on the sleeve edge. So I would just fold this under and iron it and then fold it under again. And it's just going to encase that going to be a narrow hem just like the name says and then I'm going to top stitch it across across here across the top just like it calls for so since I already showed you how to do that on the sleeve I'm not going to show that part just because it will make this video extremely long but I am going to do that for this whole strip so it is going to take a second to get the ironing done on this but it's going to look really nice so take your time and Fold it over once, iron it, and then fold it over again, and I'll pin that in place, and then sew that in place as well. Okay, 
wow, that was a lot of hemming, <laughs> but hopefully you guys got that done. Here's what mine is looking like. And now we're ready to place our ruffle on our skirt. So we're placing it on the bottom side of the skirt. So not the side you gathered already. On your skirt, you're gonna have two dots. So I have one over here and then one over here. And that's my front, the front of my skirt. And then you wanna find the center back. I guess I don't have a dot there. Maybe they don't have us do a dot, but I'm just gonna fold my piece in half and mark that. Cause one of our seams of our ruffle, so I'm gonna place this seam right here, I'm just grabbing the closest one, is going to go in the center back. And I'm putting it right sides together. So I'm just gonna place that one right there and pin that in place. And then I'm gonna take the rest of this. Oh, let's see here. And we're doing raw edges together. So make sure you're not doing the one you just sewed. That would be not fun to have to redo. Okay, so then we're gonna take another one of our seams and line that up with one of our dots. That is not a dot. Let's find the other dot right there. Okay, so I have a seam from my ruffle, my bottom ruffle, and I'm lining that seam up right sides together with my dot, with that one dot. And then I'll do the same thing with the last seam, should be the last seam that I have. Somewhere around here. There we go. I think I skipped a dot. Yep, I skipped it. Okay. And this one to the wrong one. So we're going to put this one. Make sure everything <laughs> lays out correctly, or you're going to have to repin it all. We don't want that to happen. Definitely don't want to have to resew it either. So, okay. So dot with the seam lined up and then your raw edges are lined up right sides are together it kind of looks like a mess of fabric right now but we're going to gather our ruffle now and then it's going to fit in between those pins so here i have these two pins i want to fit this ruffle in between it so i'm just going to pull those strands and then kind of make sure those ruffles are dispersed evenly and then pin it in place. Once you have every section gathered, we're just gonna take it over to the sewing machine and very carefully and slowly sew these gathers. And I'm just gonna sew it 5 eighths of an inch and sew all the way around. Okay, now that we have the bottom ruffles done, we only have one more set of ruffles to go. And I like to go around and trim all my gathering threads, trim everything. I don't wait till the end because it just bothers me. But now we're just gonna finish it off by doing the same exact thing, but putting it on our bodice or the top. So you want to make sure your front skirt is going to the front of the bodice. And again, we're going to be putting it right sides together. So this is going to be going inside of it. So I'm going to put the skirt inside of the top. And you can kind of see there's a point right here for the center of the bodice to match up. Um, I don't have a point there or a mark there, so I'm just gonna leave that for now. But there are notches, so I'm gonna match up those notches. And I went around and pinned them on the skirt, so I'm just gonna match them up. And then we can do our gathers, just like we did on the ruffle on the skirt. So then once I have those side seams matched up as well, I'll start gathering it and just make sure it's divided evenly within the sections that we have. I'm 
then once i have all those gathers sewn like i said earlier i just trim off all my gathering threads or any excess threads that i might have okay guys and then once you're done with your gathers and cleaning up those threads you might want to give it a good press um pressing the gathers a little bit but here i have mine on you can't really see the whole thing i'll put a picture in here if i can get one um but yeah i'm really excited i love how it fits i love the flow of it and i just love the ruffles it's a very cute um spring summer dress so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial make sure to give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or comments make sure to leave them down below in the comment section also make sure to check out the baby lock brilliant i'll put all my links down below for that as well and i will see you guys next time bye